everyone, and welcome to Solar Tech Talk. I'm Aaron Bingham. And I'm Jason Burnett. Jason, tell me, last week we were at NAPSEP together. It was a long week. It was a lot of fun, though. Have you recovered? I have. I got some good sleep, and, and I'm ready to, to jump into this episode with you. Nice, yeah. We today are going to be joined by Sean O'Brien, who is the president and CEO of NABCEP. NABCEP stands for the North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners. They offer a certification program for installers all over the country. It's one of my favorite events. It um, kind of cycles through West central and eastern locations every three years so that solar installers who need to um, recertify every third year have easy access to the show let's go ahead and jump into it let's do it sean thanks for joining us today uh, thank you aaron nice to see you again same yeah. with you jason as aaron said i'm sean o'brien president and ceo of napsep and with napsep uh, since November 2016, and I've had the privilege of seeing NAPSEP just grow over the last seven years to where we have more and more folks certifying themselves in, in the industry as well as attending our conference. So it's been a, been a, a great seven-year ride so far. Yeah, I, I, I think I heard somewhere that this year was one of the biggest years. Are, are you all back to pre-pandemic attendance levels? Is that is that accurate? Oh, yeah, we're back in beyond. Pre-pandemic, we're about you know, approaching 700. We had, uh, we were able to register about 860 folks for this show. Uh, we had approximately about 125 that had to be put on a wait list. And that was only because the venue that we were at in St. Charles, Missouri, was actually selected. It was going to be the show in March of 2020. And we had to cancel that three days before it started. Yeah, I remember. So the, the, well, huh. Yeah, so the venue itself couldn't hold more than about 850. We did about 860, 856, somewhere around there. But we could have easily had, you know, approaching 1,000. We expect next year, and uh, we'll be in the Raleigh uh, in North Carolina at the convention center. So we'll be able to accommodate, you know, that bigger number as we move forward. We're expecting probably 1,100, 1,200 folks which gets to that tipping point for NAPSET. Unlike other shows where it's just mainly a trade show, this started off, you know, NAPSET's conference started off as an educational training event. And then the trade show was added after. So we're really education with a trade show component, unlike other shows that are trade shows with a little bit of education and we feed everyone. So, you know, imagine trying to feed 1200 people, three meals a day for three or four days logistically can become a nightmare. So we purposely know we have to limit the amount of attendees. Not that there's no interest, it's just that we, we don't wanna change the show. The show has a unique character and we wanna maintain that character because we know from the surveys that you know, post-conference that that's what the attendees like. They like that networking, they like the meals, and it gives a lot both to the attendees and to the exhibitors. Yeah, I, I know one of the things that I love most about the show is just the opportunity to sit down with installers from all over the country and hear about how their business is going. Um, what, what are the trends that they're seeing in their areas? There's, it's, it's really this um, opportunity to learn openly from, from other folks um, that are also in the industry, that are also facing some of the same challenges. So it's, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, and that's another unique thing about our show is all the attendees know the industry. They know the business. They know the tech side. So usually when we have, and we had quite a few new exhibitors this year. And when we speak with them prior to the show, we, we tell them, listen, here's your, a warning. Don't send your marketing person per se. Send your tech people because marketing folks at the exhibit uh, booth won't be able to manage most of the time the type of questions they're going to get about the products or services that the exhibitor has because they're going to want to have they're going to have those difficult deep dive questions and they expect answers on the spot so we always say if you don't you know you send a marketing person but make sure you have some technical people there our marketing person that knows their tech right <laughs> exactly yeah and there are those there are those who do yeah yep. the, absolutely absolutely yeah and the interesting thing about this year is we had approximately 45 percent of the attendees were first-time attendees which was great i think that just to me shows 
a growth in the industry, people wanting to come to this type of conference and learn more and more about what's happening. I'm sure it has a lot to do with the IRA as well, uh, with the Inflation Reduction Act. But we had, if from the get-go, dating back to November, you know, as registrations were coming in, more and more uh, first-timers. Yeah, and, and say, I myself was a first time, you know, showing to NAPSEP, and it was, I was highly impressed. Um, what you just mentioned on the, you know, kind of not sending the marketing person was very evident in a lot of the classes, and it was greatly appreciated to not, you know, just be trying to be sold a product, but the information I could generalize across multiple products across the industry. Um, and it was, it was greatly appreciated on my end. Yeah. And I think that's what, you know, with those technical sessions and with the panel sessions, the way they're, the way they're run is, you know, the audience loves, you know, the attendees when they say the ability to be able to ask those questions, even during those sessions, you know, have the, the it's not just, you no know, uh, pointing to a PowerPoint and speaking to a PowerPoint but it's that interaction between the presenter and the audience that is really nice for, for that type of training and, and education. With this conference going on year over year, um, expected growth next year, what, are the, what were the differences this year? But this year, you know, over the last few years, we've added things. We added in the, uh, the roundtables probably back in, I would say, 2019, which was a, a, a pre-conference event because in 2018, so many people showed up early and they wanted to be able to do something. And, and we wanted to add in more opportunities for getting continuing education credits. So we came up with the roundtables. And then we started doing uh, breakfast uh, for specialty groups, veterans and uh, women in minorities in solar, which have become very popular. Both of those this year had over 70 people attend those specialty breakfasts which was fantastic. And they spoke about you know, diversity in the women and minorities and then veterans and how to get them more veterans into the industry. This year, uh, we did two more uh, pre-conference events, or three more, excuse me, we did three more. We did, uh, we worked with Wesco, who sponsored a, a self-defense uh, class. And then we worked with Rutech, who did an outside demo um, for their products. And then uh, Scanafly, who did a uh, outside on Monday uh, demo of, of their drones and the drone system and everything. All three of them were well attended. It was great. Uh, attendees loved it because they gave us some opportunities to do something on Monday instead of just you know, standing around waiting for our traditional meet and greet. And of course, the keynote and the reception um, sponsored by Bewa, which people absolutely love. I mean, they love being able to have that pre-conference networking opportunity. We started last year as an experiment in uh, 2022 in Phoenix, just to videotape, uh, video record a few of the uh, just sessions. I think we did three, three of the sessions or six of the sessions, and it worked out great. And those recordings we put up in the new uh, NAPSEP LMS system, the learning management system called Renew Ed, you know, Renew Education, NAPSEP Renew Ed. Um, so this year we did two rooms, and so we got 12 different uh, sessions were recorded which we would then take, we'll have them edited and we'll put them up on that LMS system. So that if someone who was at the conference and had to make a difficult choice between what they wanted to attend, they'll have the opportunity following the conference to go, go to that LMS system. And if they already, if they paid to attend the conference for that year, they'll be able to see those for free. And if someone who just couldn't make it or someone who was on a wait list and wasn't able to attend the conference at all, they'll be able to go in and see all 12 of those recordings for a very nominal fee, it's going to be very inexpensive. We just need a naps up so a nonprofit. And, you know, we can do good and do well, but we need to at least cover some of our costs. So it's going to be pretty inexpensive for folks to be able to see that. Um, so that was a big piece. Challenging part for us was some of the prevent, uh, presenters can have colorful language, I guess I'll say. So we have to make sure that they keep it <laughs> at least PG. Right. I, can, so, I can see somebody working hard to uh, edit down Emmett. <laughs> yeah. There's Emmett a few names. Some, or, yeah. Right. You know, Je Greg Smith from Tygo, Jeff Spees who's yeah. on our board. Yeah. Yeah, they, <laughs> they can have colorful language. So we'll be doing some editing on those videos. But once we do, they'll be up and in that LMS system. The main drive for that is a couple of years ago, 
NAFSEP board changed the number of hours you need to recertify from 18 to 30. And that was best practices for any certification. But we can only have so many hours available during the conference. So we wanted to make sure there was at least 10 hours available outside the conference that people can go to where they don't have to spend you know, $800 to take a training somewhere to be able to get their continuing education. This way it gives them a very inexpensive way to get those additional hours. And that LMS system is not just, not only NAPSEP, we have other uh, manufacturers and, and, and folks who do training who can uh, have a branded space on that uh, LMS system if they want. So they just contact NAPSEP and we can work with them on getting a branded, uh, their own branded space on that platform and they can put free trainings up. They can put trainings if they want to charge for them as well. It's something that as we surveyed our population, it was something that they were looking for more and more. Uh, they're just looking for good training that isn't too expensive to help them advance their careers in the industry. One other thing that's not new but has grown quite a bit is back in 2018 in Niagara Falls, we decided we wanted to get new, some of the newer folks in. So we started doing a PV associate training during the conference, which allows folks who really have no experience generally and very little knowledge in the industry to come to the conference, experience the conference, network with you know, with folks who have you know, a lot of experience and knowledge and then be able to take that training so they can get the PV associate credential and, and potentially you know, get their first job in the industry. That started off in 18, about 10 people. This year, we ended up having 32 people taking that training. Wow. which was, that's all we could accommodate in the in the room that it was in. And they loved it. They, I had so many comments from the folks who were taking that training saying, this is the best thing I've ever done. Um, they just love the training. They love being able to network with folks, ask questions, things of that nature. And that's what the conference is all about, is that exchange of knowledge. So it really worked out well, particularly for that population. Yeah, and it's it's really exciting to hear that you all are making some of that material available through an LMS system. Um, I don't think that you plugged a specific email address, though. Is there a particular uh, uh, contact point that you would um, direct folks to? Yeah, it's uh, on staff. There's uh, Eric, Eric Falante. So that's the best place to go is just to email Eric. There is some information on our website, but uh, a direct we we have a. A, a theory or process that we prefer hands-on type thing. I mean, so when when a person can be contacted, we prefer doing it that way. Uh, I'm very old school, traditional, and I like you know that sort of face-to-face -face customer service yeah. type thing. I mean, and anyone who's been certified with NAVSEP probably has received a phone call from someone on staff maybe a month or two before your, your recertification time, just, just to remind you, help you through it. If you haven't, you know, if you, some people forget they're certified or forget they have a recertification coming up. So we don't rely on you know, six emails in a year to say, hey, it's time to recertify. We actually call folks, try to help them through it if possible. So everything we do is very customer oriented and uh, to be able to just help people through it. We know people have you know, almost so many hours in a day to do stuff, and we want to make it as easy as possible from regardless of what it is. So Eric Falante is the best way to, to get the information that you need to be able to either join it as a student, which is free. Anyone can join the LMS for free to be able to take the courses. And then as manufacturer or someone wants to put training up there, uh, they just reach out to us and we step them through the process. We help them get everything loaded and, and things of that nature. It's in the, it's, uh, the platform is uh, Canvas by Instructor, which is one of the biggest online uh, academic you know, educational platforms. So, but we help the instructors make the page, put the stuff up there, everything. One other thing that was, was new this year, I wonder if you want to talk about scholarship that gets given out. Was this the first year that we had somebody actually attending from that? The Walt Raderman, we did have last year was the first time. So oh. this year it was uh, all back. Then that award is for someone who's just basically given back to the industry, who has done projects pro bono uh, and has a legacy of doing that type of work that, that Walt was known for. That's great. Um, the Les Nelson scholarship was very interesting because this was the First year, we started that uh, after Les Nelson, a longtime board member of NAPSEP and CALSA or CALSEA had passed away. 
sort of board style of that scholarship. Last year was the first year and the young man who received it last year was able to be present. Uh, this year, we're, there was enough in the, in, the, in the funds to do two scholarships. And so we were able to do it. And it was very interesting because one of the gentlemen who won it was from Nigeria. So it's nice. We had, uh, we had about 10 applicants. Three were international. So it was really nice. Excuse me, the other gentleman was from um, Colorado, but neither could attend. But the nice thing was to be able to have that virtual ceremony and it worked seamlessly. And it was just nice to have the, the gentleman from Nigeria to be able to join and be able to do that. Hopefully both of them will attend the conference next year um, in Raleigh. And so they'll be, they'll be there. Yeah, and Sean, like uh, you did touch on uh, the keynote uh, with, with Jody, not having attended in past years, I'm kind of curious at, at how the topic differed. It seemed like a much different topic for a keynote speaker than, than I've experienced at, at other venues. It, interesting. It was something that I've been thinking about uh, having someone speak on that type of topic. I, you know, the, the more about how to treat people, not just employees or or but just people in general, how to be good and, and to understand people and things of that nature. I guess for everybody who wasn't at, at the show and didn't get to see the the talk, Jody White, our, our CEO here at, at Baywa, talked about kind of the the three truths uh, and no lie in the industry that the the you know the environment's very dynamic. Um, and how changes cause stress and, and how we deal with that stress, how that shows up with our, our employees and, and how we interact with those employees. And, and it kind of put a lot of uh, accountability on the leaders and, and you know, everybody in the NABSEP room, right? Uh, all the leaders in the industry and you know, hitting three key points there of awareness, adaptability and, and attitude. And, and overall, it was kind of the overall message you know, was be a good person and pay attention. And it was it was just uh, very interesting to hear hear that being spoken to, to such a big crowd to such a, a wealth of industry leaders. Yeah, it's so true to Baywa's fundamental position that you know we're we're a team of people that makes up the company, right? And in order for us to be running a sustainable business, um, we have to be making sure that we're making sustainable decisions. We have to be sure that our customers are running healthy businesses so that they stay in business as best we can. We try to level up everyone in the industry that we work with, be they, you know, installers, um, manufacturing partners that we have on our line card. And to, to hear Jody kind of talk through the fundamentals of just being aware of yourself and what you're bringing to the room and to the situation, making sure that you're adaptable and kind of able to check some of your presumptions at the door, making sure that everyone's putting in the hard work to cultivate an attitude that will lead to the workplace being an environment that folks enjoy and want to stay at. It was really special to, to know that that hit home for so many people who are in attendance at NABSEP. And uh, I was I was really excited to see her up there on the main stage. It was the largest audience we've had for a keynote so far. Mm -hmm. There was probably, I did a quick count just by row. There was probably close to 500, if not a little bit over 500 folks in that room. Wow. So it was... It was very well attended. I would like to take credit for it to say that you know, NAPSEP guided her that way, but we didn't. It was all her. <laughs> so after the keynote is when things got really interesting, in my opinion, that the next day we started to take different sessions. And I'd be really curious to hear from, from each of you and I'll, I'll jump in as well. What were some of the things that shown through for you either as trends that were happening in the industry that were new and different or things that you that you learned or that you came to understand better or in a different way um, than you understood it previously? As far as the course of presented for me, new trends, unfortunately, I don't get to see them all, but I get to read all the descriptions and everything. But I, I do duck in. Um, a lot of things around uh, workforce, around the, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, apprenticeships, things of that nature. Uh, storage, obviously, there was more, more and more storage uh, being presented. For me, the big piece is speaking with the attendees afterwards, talking the conversations with them and, and, and with other attendees, discussing the topics that they just heard in the room. 
you know, um, I stand outside the room sometimes and hearing them talking about what they just, you know, what the presenter just went through. It's really nice because, you know, I've been in lots of trainings and things of that nature over the years. And sometimes you're just sitting there saying, oh, my God, when is this going to end? I'm sitting in the front of the room and I can't just walk out. You don't see that with these trainings. They sit there and then they're talking about it when they leave. Yeah. To me, that is the greatest thing because you know then that that material, that knowledge is fresh. It was the same old thing. They wouldn't be talking about it. What, what, what about you, Jason? I, I know that you went to a few different courses about racking and O&M. What, mm -hmm. what stood out for you? Yeah, yeah. You know, here at Baywa, I, I do focus a little bit on racking. So I did jump into a lot of those sessions. I think the one for me that, that really jumped out as different was on operation and, and maintenance. Um, it's not something that, you know, I, I really thought of in my position in the past. Um, and it was kind of, you know, surprising to see maybe how little of that there is. Not, not only was it great information um, that can you know, improve like business practice, but it's it's a potential revenue stream in, as well. And just the panel that, that was discussing it were, were such a great group of experts. I, I kind of, just like Sean said, I kind of came out of there, you know, I think I immediately started talking to you about it um, and, and, you know, talking to other people around the room. So I thought that one was great. Yeah, I think that's the, uh, that's the one that I, I got the awesome, uh, <laughs> real quick. Oh, you won that? Yeah. Oh. Emmett made it. Yes. Yeah. Emmett made it. Uh, so it's a, a, a giant American flag with a uh, proud American PV professional routed into the into one of the banners of the flag. So it's it's pretty awesome. I, I won it by luck, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll hang it with pride. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you know, one of the things that jumped out for me, um, it's just something that it was a bit of knowledge that helped me better understand a trend that we've been seeing in terms of uh, the adoption of top mounted solutions on pitched roofs, right? We're seeing a lot more solutions that don't require the same or um, the, the what I have come to think of as the traditional method of installing uh, mounting locations on asphalt shingle roofs where you kind of crowbar up a few layers of the shingle to make space for your flashing to slide underneath a few um, rows of shingle and then go about installing your foot underneath that flashing. You know, in, in the last couple of years, we've been seeing a lot more sales um, solutions that allow you to install the mounting foot directly on top of the asphalt shingle without doing any of that lifting. And that actually has a lot to do with the trend within the roofing materials industry, where roofers now to offer roofs that are more impervious to wind than they were previously, have started including a, a chemical layer, a chemical band in the asphalt shingle strips. And when pressed together with another one of those chemical bands um, creates actually a me mechanical, <laughs> creates a mechanical bond. <laughs> that is near impossible to separate, uh, makes it near impossible to separate one layer of asphalt shingles from another. So for any installers who are doing lots of work on homes that have new roofs that were installed within the last couple of years, especially roofs that have, you know, 40 year, 50 year warranties and say that, um, you know, they're windproof. Um, that's a, that's a big red flag to know that your team is not going to be able to lift those shingle shingles up in the same way as they were able to in the past. And um, you, you'll need to adjust your business practices and your buying practices, your, your mounting solution choices to make sure that you can accommodate that portion of the market um, and that your team is not running into trouble trying to uh, lift those shingles up and ending up voiding a, a brand new roof's uh, warranty. Just a, just a quick pro tip for anybody listening to be thinking about this the next time you're talking to somebody about a system installed on a, on a home with a brand new roof. It, it's interesting to say that, Aaron, because we are now working with a couple of different roofing organizations and being able to provide some knowledge and, and trainings from the roofing side to solar installers. So they do a better, uh, have a better understanding of roofing and things of that nature and when they should consider putting a system on a roof that may be at that period where you have to take the system off in a year or two to put a new roof on and be able to still speak to homeowners about that and what they're doing. So that's a, we'll probably see some of those trainings in our LMS system before the end of this year. 
Yeah, it's it's really exciting to be to see us expanding the reach of the industry. And, you know, I know that Sue Stark over at Iron Ridge um, has had a lot of conversations with other um, roofing manufacturers, um, kind of in the same tone of just trying to understand how we can make sure that we're all working together in an effective way. Um, so shout out to her and the Iron Ridge team for all the hard work that they did in um, preparing for their sessions. And if I'm not mistaken, Aaron, I believe that was videotaped, video recorded. So that's one of the ones that will be up on our LMS system if anyone wants to go see it in, in a couple of months. Fantastic. Yeah, I think that that was called uh, Know Your Code Solar Roof Mounting for anybody who wants to find that training session in the NAPSEP LMS. Yeah, and I know we've talked a lot about sessions and training and on all the things that go on, but you know, there's a lot of memorable moments created, uh, you know, between sessions and all the fun stuff that was happening. Uh, Sean, did you have anything particularly that memorable or stood out for you? As far as fun stuff, the, the, the receptions at night always have something that they just don't forget year after year. Nothing like the 2017 when we had furries who showed up on the last day of the uh, the conference. But, <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> which was very interesting. This is, this is a very about. true story, folks. We were we were. Yeah, it there. was a, a furry a furry conference came in afterwards, yeah. and you would never think that folks from the soul for the from the solar industry would mix well with them. But it was like a match made in heaven. They yeah, absolutely it loved funny. it. Everybody we was get, giving hugs and. Yeah, ever since that. Yeah, we get questions from someone saying, are the furries going to be there again? Are the furries going to be there again? So we didn't have that. But we did have, this is the first year we did uh, karaoke and dancing, which was, I wasn't expecting the dancing. We were just supposed to have music and karaoke. But the karaoke was a hoot. Oh, my gosh. Some very talented singers, not some not so talented, including myself, which I didn't dance because I sing worse than I dance. And... And, and Aaron, how about for you? What stood out for you? Um, you know, I had one of those fantastic conversations with Mr. Simmons over there at BE Solar uh, out of Bermuda. And we were talking about how different it is to install a system here versus there. Um, you know, there, a lot of the roofs have a uh, kind of a, a cement with a lime wash, I think, kind of out, out for the for the outer layer of the roof. And it's just a it's a completely different world when it comes to getting the installations done and, you know, the different types of customers that they're working with. So that was that was a really fun one. And it was just one where it's like, I think I ended up sitting down at a table because I saw a friend or I needed to rest my legs. I don't even remember what was up. And um, it, it was uh, it was just very rewarding. Um, to, to hear so much about how another market's operating and some of the challenges they're facing and some of the ideas that we were sharing about how to address it. It was, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, and that's a growing region for NAPSEP certifications. We just actually, during the conference, finalized a partnership with, some, with a company based in St. Kitts for NAPSEP Caribbean. So we're going to have boots on the ground in the region doing trainings and certification in, in, in that area. Yeah, Jason, what about you? Did what this was your first time? You said you you really enjoyed yourselves and in, in yourself in some of the courses. What really stood out for you? The the evening receptions and, and the activities. You know, I, I I'm in the office quite a bit and don't get on the phone, so just getting to mingle, you know, the installers and you know, just getting to use the language that I'm hearing all day, that was great. Um and I'd say also what really stood out was one of the night activities was the wait wait don't tell me. Oh yeah. Um, I, I I thought the the people on the the panel really captured the spirit of the show. There was some hilarious comments uh, fr from everybody, and, and was super proud of uh, you know Corey here uh, representing the Baywa team. Was pretty spot on with the humor, and, and just really enjoyed that and had a good time. That was that was a lot of fun, and that was that that was the second time that um, we've done a wait wait don't tell me at at Nabs Up. Is that right, Sean? Yes, we did it in uh, 21 in Knoxville and then this year again in uh, St. Charles. It was it was a lot of fun. The, the rapport between Corey, Ryan Mayfield and Stan is just you would think they rehearsed it. And I'll be honest with you, because they, they pulled me in this year to do a little they pulled me in this year to do a little segment. And that is completely unrehearsed. I, I mean, we had one call just to say, OK, the manual call was just to tell me what they wanted me to do, which I was did not do very well. The three of them had just 
a fantastic. They were like the Three Stooges up there. It was it was great. Now that naps up's over, Sean, I I imagine you've got your Disneyland tickets or Disney World tickets <laughs> set aside. <laughs> but is there is there anything that you would want to make sure that folks do before you you step away and take a wonderful vacation? I hope for yourself a much deserved vacation. I hope for yourself. Is there anything yes. that folks need to know about if they if they're hot off of the heels of naps up? Well, I am Aaron taking tomorrow off. It's no, we had a, it's a busy week afterwards. That's close. And, All right. <laughs> yeah. So I am taking tomorrow off. But the one thing we do, the, the way we can make, you know, it was a great experience for everything I'm hearing. But the thing that we can make it better is, you know, folks to respond. Everyone who attended, they'll get an email tomorrow asking them to respond to a survey. Survey will only take them, you know, if you're an attendee, maybe six to eight minutes to fill out. And it will allow you to just tell us how the trainings were how the presenters were, all that. And then also any any of the exhibitors also, because we can only make the show better if we hear what we did wrong, really. I mean, it's great to hear, oh, it was great, it was great, it was great, but nothing's perfect. We know it's not perfect. We know we can do better. Uh, and that's what we want to do. And we can only do that when we hear the feedback. So awesome. yeah, definitely. Let's, let's get that 100% participation rate and get that info we need. So, um, and with that, just want to say, you know, thanks, Sean, for, for joining us on the show. Uh, all the great information. It was great to meet you at the show. Great to talk to you here. And until next time. Yeah. And thank you guys. I mean, NAPSUP can't do the show without folks like Bewa. You all have been the platinum sponsor for seven years and we just can't do it with it would be impossible to do without support of companies like Baywa. So my hat, my hat's off to you and the entire team just for making it happen and making it fun during the show. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, it's, we we love it and uh, can't wait can't wait to see you next year. Same here.